welcome to another episode of Inspirational Women. You are about to view uh, an episode that I recorded maybe a couple of months ago with a young woman who has overcome childhood trauma and um, as a result depression and has gone on to get her life put together and become her own person. She now owns um, a, an online retail business, has a blog, and since we recorded this episode, Kalia has started a, a podcast called Light Above Solitude. She's doing really well with her podcast. She's now on Pandora and Amazon, so you can Listen to her podcast there as she helps other women and supports other women. And here it is. Hello, and welcome to the channel Inspirational Women. Please subscribe and remember to press the bell so that you can be reminded of any new videos that are going up. So today we are going to welcome Kalia. And Kalia, I'd like you to introduce yourself since I have trouble pronouncing your last name. And just tell us where you're from, you know, a little bit about your family life, then we'll go from there. Sure. Hi, I'm Kalia Quinoris. I um, was born and raised in Arlington, Washington. So I've lived in Washington my whole life. The name comes from my father's side of the family, which um, is Hawaiian, and my mother's side is Caucasian. I grew up, I like to say I grew up in a barn. I was... <laughs> We, we lived on a little mini farm and we had tons of animals. And so that kind of sparked my love for animals because we were out in the country. I'm familiar with the Arlington area. We used to live in Marysville, so I know it's a beautiful part of the country. Yes, I love it there. Did you have, do you have sisters and brothers? I have one um, younger sister. She's four and a half years younger than me. And then I have an older half sister on my father's side. There's a pretty big gap, I want to say 14 or 15 years between my older sister and I, so. And did you grow up experiencing any of the Hawaiian traditions? I did. My dad was really adamant that we learned our heritage, and he got my sister, my younger sister and I into hula dancing at a very young age. I was 11, and I danced, well... Up until now, I guess, um, a lot of events got shut down, so <laughs> I'm obviously not perform performing this year, but I pretty much danced my whole life. That sounds wonderful. And yeah. had, you, had you made the trip to Hawaii? We have gone over a few times, but not nearly as much as I would like. <laughs> the mm -hmm. last time um, was I went on a solo trip to visit a friend um, for my 30th birthday. Oh, wonderful. And yeah. so when you were growing up on this mini farm, were you uh, taking care of the animals or? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was my sole responsibility. I would wake up before school and I would take care of all the animals. We had, um, I want to say no less than 20 animals at a time. We've had... Um, we had one Arabian full-size horse, and then we had two mini horses, pygmy goats, chickens, rabbits, uh, dogs, cats. Uh, inside, we had guinea pigs. So that was my sole responsibility before school. And then after school, I was also a competitive swimmer. So when I was done with swim practice, I would come home and I would take care of the animals. And that was pretty much my life. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's a lot for a young girl. Yes. And were you competitive swimming um, while you were a teenager? Absolutely. Actually, um, my parents got me into swim lessons at the age of three. And by six, I had joined the competitive swim team and I swam all up throughout high school. So if I wasn't in the barn, I was definitely in the pool. <laughs> as you were growing up as a teenager, you were thinking that you would like to do something that was associated with animals in some way, shape, or form. Yes, yes. I loved animals and their companionship of animals. 
And so I always thought that I wanted to do something with them, which is great because when I started my business in 2017, um, it was around dogs. So <laughs> oh, good. And, okay. and then you went to college. I did go to um, community college out of right out of high school. Um, we had our graduation luau for me and I was given a choice to do with my graduation money, either take a trip to Hawaii or enroll in college. And apparently I was super responsible and decided to <laughs> enroll in college. <laughs> and um, I had been doing business classes my whole um, high school career. So I went into business administration at a Skagit Community College. And then um, life and finances got in the way because I was a lifeguard at the time and paying my own way through college after my graduation money went out. So I had to take a break and I didn't go back to college until many years later. And I started studying um, business with an emphasis on human resources and life got in the way again. So I decided to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> Well, good for you. But so it sounds like you were really a responsible young lady. Yes. And in some ways, I wonder where that person went. <laughs> Being the creative entrepreneur, I feel like I'm in my mind a lot. And um, I need to start taking more action and being more disciplined like I used to be. <laughs> and as I've watched your uh, YouTube videos, you've been very forthcoming with your experience with depression. So can we talk about that a little? When did you first have these symptoms and did you recognize them as depression? So it's really interesting. Um, I knew I was depressed through high school, um, but it wasn't until I started my blog on depression in 2017 that I realized it actually started when I moved at the age of six. So after doing some reflection on what I really thought about depression and where it came from, I targeted it to the, to the point where um, we, I was born in Renton and we lived in Pacific Washington in a cul-de-sac full of kids my age and full of lots of things to do around us. And at six, I remember my best friend telling me, there's a for sale sign in your yard. And I was like, oh no, no, no. And then I'd come home and I'm like, what's up with that? Christy told me there's a for sale sign in our yard. And mom's like, we told you this already, we're moving. And for some, I was a child, obviously. Right. <laughs> for some reason, I just like, it skipped my mind. I didn't realize this was actually happening. And um, so we ended up moving to Arlington, um, a few rentals in between our house. Um, one of the most predominant memories during the move was we rented a house in Marysville. And we were only there for about six weeks, but the cops ended up raiding our house. I was six, my sister was two, and they had all four of us out on the yard with our faces down in the grass. And I remember my dad was holding my infant sister um, and she wasn't calming down and so the cops were, were holding a gun to my sister and my father's head because he wouldn't lay down on the grass. And I'm like, as an adult, I'm like, how do you hold a gun to a two-year-old? <laughs> it was such a traumatic transition into moving. And then once we were finally settled into our place in Arlington, I was in the country and I had zero kids around me and zero friends. And that's why I think I really dove into the animal aspect because those animals became my whole community as a child. And plus you had been traumatized. Well, yeah. did, did you have any idea of why your home was being raided by the police? So it had something to do with the person we were renting the house from. I believe that person was escaping the law and just took the cash um, cash rental and took off. And so they had obviously the wrong family when they came to the address. The police did figure it out, bring us back in and sit us down. And <laughs> they gave my sister and I teddy bears that apparently they keep in their trunk in case they come across children, yes. which was a nice thing, but also not quite enough to erase that memory. <laughs> 
Oh, I just can't imagine that happening, of course. And you were only six at this age. Yeah, it was, it was very, a very, uh, yeah, traumatic experience to um, kind of go into. And then even as an adult, so I, I clearly was the, the innocent party and hadn't done anything wrong. And um, as an adult, when I started driving, I was like super cautious around cops because I was like, you never know, you never know, like something could happen. And so I had this underlying fear of basically authority and that I had to really work through when I was working through my depression and some other things, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> did, you, did you seek counseling for your depression? Not formally. I would talk to some friends and some other people and I'd, I'd confine in people, uh, authority figures on like YouTube and stuff, but I was never in a place to have medical insurance to cover therapy and specific um, clinical things like that um, until as, let's see, I was about 27 when I really looked back on my life and I had nothing to blame my depression on anymore. Like I wasn't going through my teenage hormonal years. I, I finally had a stable job and I, I was actually at the time engaged to be married and we had a house and I realized I was still depressed and I was like, why you should be really happy right now. Why are you depressed? And that was the point where I was like, okay, I finally need help. And so I went out and um, I talked to a doctor and we got on, I was on medication for a few years. I'm no longer on it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot of resourcefulness and making sure I did reach out to people who um, I felt safe with and would understand um, some of the feelings I was feeling, so. But how did that impact your jobs that you've had? I mean, you've had several jobs prior to branching out into your own business. It was really interesting because I would call myself highly functional. <laughs> um, right. I would always, I was made, I, I like made myself put on that face and go for it and had to do the things. And so um, it only, it only affected my jobs on certain days where I really seriously could not get out of bed and I would call out sick, but I'd make sure that I wouldn't jeopardize my job enough to say get fired or anything like that. So you, you were coping to a certain degree. Yes. yes. And, and how did that um, impact your relationships as you went through teenage years and your 20s and now your 30s? I was consistently in toxic relationships from my very first adult relationship when I moved out, which was the most toxic and the longest to date, to um, getting married and shortly after getting divorced. Um, and they were complete different spectrums. The, my first relationship was completely manipulative and abusive and um, I stayed there because of my depression, thinking I had nowhere else to go. And then I started working myself out of those stages and I met my ex-husband and he and I got along really well. We both came from um, toxic relationship pasts and we realized that we weren't butting heads and so that it was okay to go forward with the relationship. But then I started thinking, it's not healthy because we're not fighting. Uh, right. It's actually still toxic, but it's the opposite side of toxic. It's the toxic where we don't have a relationship at all. He was working night shift and I was working day shift. And, you know, when we were together, we were like watching TV or cooking dinner. We were never bonding and actually having a relationship. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so there's definitely a lack of communication there. That's a shame. And so now, though, you have moved on to bigger and better things. Yes. And that's, you know, it's really courageous of you to own your own story like you are and to express it to other people because it's very helpful for others who are going through the same emotions as you to see that, you know, well, you came out on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. That was my hope when I started Front Seat Writer as a blog was 
I went through all these things by myself because I didn't feel comfortable coming forward to the people around me. And I didn't want anyone else to have to go through those things alone. So if they could just find um, comfort in reading my blog post and knowing that they weren't alone in those feelings and knowing that it's okay to, you know, if you have to put on that mask to go to work every day, that there's no shame or blame in those things. Um, right. So that's, that's, I really appreciate you saying that. Yeah, and you know, it does give, it gives you hope and it also gives others hope. Yes. That there, that there is that wall that you can climb and then achieve whatever your heart desires. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's just all in your head, isn't it? Yes, so true. So yeah. So tell us about your um, business today. And what about your relationship that you have now? You're happy with your relationship? Yes, uh, we are going on four years in um, January. So we are doing good. He Congratulations. Was, thank you. He was crazy enough to downsize both of our apartments and move into a 26 foot trailer. So I think we're doing awesome. <laughs> you are, that's really close contact. Yes. <laughs> My business front seat rider, um, it started out as the blog, like I was mentioning. And then um, a year later, I grew into a mobile pop-up shop selling um, apparel and gifts for dog lovers. This is one of our shirts, Welcome Diversity. <laughs> you. Um, and so we do different vendor events and markets and shelter events. And I like to give back to um, local charities. And um, especially the ones where I got my two dogs. So um, Noah's and Stanwood and then the Whatcom Humane Society. I had a sole focus the last few years of talking dog moms through depression and giving them that companionship like we get with our dogs. Um, but now I'm moving into more self-growth. And so I'm starting a podcast called Light Above Solitude, which is around the same lines of we kind of put ourselves into that self-induced solitude when if we just open up and shine our brightest light and be our true authentic self we can get out of that solitude so i'm currently working on that but it it hasn't officially launched yet <laughs> okay well good for you but you do have a lot of videos up on youtube where you i've seen some of them where you're talking to other dog moms as you say Yes, yes, and, to um, interview people for their stories. Yeah, I think it's a great thing. And also, you're young to be so motivated to become your own um, boss, for lack of a better word. What made you want to leave the nine to five routine? I have always, since I was a little girl, wanted to own my own business, but I never really knew what that looked like. Um, my dad was very, had a very entrepreneurial spirit and he would help me walk through things when I was like interested in fashion design. He would be like, oh, you can go to school for this and that and mm -hmm. or interested in starting an espresso stand. He would walk me through those kind of things. So I've always had that, um, that dream to own my own business. Um, and I just came to realize one day that I was like, if you're not going to at least put a foot forward in motion, it's not going to happen. So right. that's when I was like, okay, how do people make money online and be their own boss? And I came across blogging. <laughs> so I started the blog. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there is a, definitely a certain amount of risk taking involved. I mean, you have to do your research, but it's a risk and you have to be willing to do that. Yes, well, yeah, I definitely don't choose the easy roads, I suppose. <laughs> That's, all right. That's all right. So what, what do you see for yourself in, say, five years or 10 years down the road? Right now, I am envisioning being able to impact um, enough women that they can go out and be their true authentic selves and impact their group and their group and their group and uh, basically start a movement around accepting 
all parts of ourselves, even the things we don't like, like our depression and our oppressive past, and really embrace all those things so that we can move forward and, and just shine as, as bright and as happy as we can to the rest of the world. I love that you're taking the attitude of supporting other women. I think it's so needed in today's society. When I was your age, I certainly wasn't, that was not one of my thoughts because I was, you know, I had a child at, at, at your age. But uh, as I've got older, I can appreciate that we, as women, we need to support one another, help one another rise up, not only in our community, but in um, a business. It is inspirational, really and truly it is. And I admire you for that. Thank you. Yeah, well, best of luck. Thank you for taking time to speak with me today. We're gonna put all your, your we're gonna put all your links um, for your blog and your YouTube channel, etc., on this video when it when I um, post it. Thank you again, Kalia. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome.